is AJ. It's Wednesday on the Beaver Bunch. This week's topic is lesbian music. So I decided to give you like lesbian music throughout the years that I have been into music. So basically since I was a kid. This is my opinion. This is how I see things. I'm not saying this is how it is or how it was. My opinions. This is YouTube. That's why we make videos to share our opinions. So feel free to tell me I'm wrong and feel free to tell me I'm right because that's what I like to hear more. This is how I see it. So I grew up in the 80s. I'm probably one of the oldest people on YouTube making videos right now. In fact, I don't even know how I still have all of my teeth because to some of you, I am ancient. Um, I remember watching the Arrhythmics video, Here Comes the Rain Again, and seeing Annie Lennox, very androgynous with red hair. And I'll try and link all these videos that I mentioned below so you can go see it. I know Annie Lennox isn't a lesbian, okay? Squash that right there. What I'm saying is, it was like, wow, I'm a kid and this lady's on TV dressed like a man. Like, that's kind of cool. What, what is this? Like, this is new. So the 80s was very eye-opening for me as a child because um, men dressed like women and women dressed like men. And it just kind of was in music videos. And it was, it was really cool. So from the 80s, we bridged over into the 90s, which was a first for me as far as lesbian music happened. Um, Katie Lang's Constant Craving would come on and my mom would be like, hey, it's your song. And I'd be like, shut up, mom. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, because I was like 16 and my mom was like, hey, it's your song. Like, Katie Lang, Constant Craving. Because, you know, Constant Craving has other innuendos like you're craving women or, you know, you get it. Um, Melissa Etheridge also, um, come to my window came out and she was a huge lesbian back then. And it was like, Ooh, is secretly going to listen to this CD and the Indigo Girls. I wasn't really, or ever have been into the Indigo Girls, but I know that they did come out in the nineties. I do like some of their songs like Galileo, um, late nineties started Lilith Fair and I'd like to clear something up. Sarah McLaughlin is not a lesbian. Tori Amos is not a lesbian. Natalie Merchant is not a lesbian and Tattoo, all the things you said, they are not lesbians. They were just part of Lilith Fair. Um, Ani DeFranco was he huge in the early nineties and she married a guy. You guys, she's not a lesbian. She was very politically aware, a very uh, feminist singer. She claimed to be bisexual, but never once did I see her with a woman. She did say the word cunt a few times in her songs, but um, the 2000s, we were early 2000s, really grasping at straws here to find some new lesbian music. We did have Lilith Fair, which was like, Nice because all the lesbians went and congregated like a lesbian like movement. We all went there and supported these singers, but really none of them on the main stage were lesbians. Um, however, later on in the 2000s came Tegan and Sarah and they fucking knocked the socks off of all of us wanting some new music. So Tegan and Sarah came around and then not so popular Katie Curtis. I actually liked Katie Curtis and I bought her CD. I, I think she's good. Um, but now into the later 2000s, we have Goddess and She, The Gossip, um, and Shelly Wright just came out as a country western singer. So um, that's really cool. And there's a documentary on Netflix actually about it. Kind of boring, but... You know, we're all scared to come out, Shelly. You did it. You just made a movie about it. Good job, girl. Um, and also there are trans groups. Um, there's Catastrophe. He's really good. And the Athens Choir Boys. Athens Boy Choir. And they have a really cute song. Um, and also, um, I think in the early 2000s, there was, what are they called? Team Gina this butch femme song but i don't know if they're still together but that's kind of like lesbian music progressing through throughout the years the way i see it i don't know how you see it but i think that from like 99 to like 2005 we didn't have any good new lesbian music come out that's why sarah mclaughlin made love affair she's like let's give them something like these girls need something because they're going crazy and that's all so, yes, Mom, I always had a constant craving, and I'm not a really big lesbian music fan. I do like the gossip, though. I like the Love Long Distance video where they're roller skating, and I'll give you a link for that. 
So that's my video. I will see you guys next week. Um, Jess is in Thailand. I think Lori's in Puerto Rico. Michelle was at the Tegan and Sarah concert the other day. That was Michelle on our Facebook page. And Kate is just a busy guy. So hopefully everybody else will make a video. Michelle picked out this topic. So Michelle, it's your turn. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.